Hello and welcome to Ula Tea Leaf Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Aries. If Aries is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. All right, let's get started. And so our card tonight is the Queen of Cups. One of my favorite archetypes. And let's see what these tea leaves have to say. What do you have to say tonight? <laughs> All right. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit the little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. It is free to subscribe. Interesting. So uh, we have a person that is enthroned, meaning they're sitting in a throne, um, wearing some kind of dress or a robe of some kind. You can see the head up here, arm out and holding a cup. So we totally have that uh, queen of cups energy and it is being mirrored right here. So um, this is a big energy in your life right now. And that is one of um, really kind of a very, very intelligent emotional state. You have absolutely um, come into kind of your maturity emotionally. Um, I think that you are somebody who feels a lot. You probably have a lot of perspectives about things. Sometimes they may be in conflict with one another, but because you really operate from this instinctual and emotional zone, um, you are able to kind of flow freely and fluidly uh, through your understandings, your beliefs, and your, uh, your knowledge and wisdom of things. You are not um, one to kind of uh, choose, you know, something dogmatically and, um, you know, stay right there. You, you're definitely um, able to kind of adapt with, with the situation, right? And so um, I think this really makes you somebody who is probably very uh, psychic, clairvoyant, you maybe are a seer of some kind. I know that you feel emotions and other, you feel your emotions and other people's emotions deeply. You're definitely an empath. Um, and so uh, we also have a bird right here by the cup. And it makes me believe that you are probably somebody who has some degree of mediumship. Okay, you receive messages from um, non-human entities or um, people who have transitioned and so on. Um, I think that this is something that has probably always been the case, but I believe that now at this point in your life, it is something that you are quite aware of um, and it is something that... Um, I, I can, I really feel like, um, it's, it, you're open to it, you know, more than you ever have been. Uh, I think at times you probably maybe thought, um, this is like, I just have like a really great imagination or, oh, it's a coincidence, right? I had this dream. I received this message and then it happened or, um, you know, it was, it was all, um, true information and, um, but the, it's probably a coincidence. I, you know, something in my, my psyche was working out and, and here is the, um, outcome of that. Well, I also, you know, that might be true to some degree. Um, but I do think that you really truly are, uh, communing with other things. 
And so now I wonder, you know, are you practicing? Are you doing things like seances? Are you channeling? Are you, um, you know, doing other uh, forms of mediumship? Uh, maybe this is even something because we have that queen energy. Maybe this is something that uh, you have incorporated into your career or uh, maybe, you know, you have a business. Uh, you're a psychic or a medium or um, a diviner of some kind. Um, but I do feel like you have a very powerful uh, gift here. Okay. And I think, you know, other people in your life have totally pointed it out. And um, it's something that you're pretty accurate with as well. Okay. So I take a sip. My throat is getting dry here. And. Okay, so we have a little puppy here, and it looks like it's shaking its head. You can see the eyes, the nose, the kind of droopy um, lips there, and its ear kind of looks like it's flapping up this way, and the other one's hanging there, and I can imagine um, like running out of uh, the bath and like flapping its, <laughs> its ears all over the place. So I do feel like you are somebody who... Um, is quite loyal. I think you're also pretty silly. Um, you're very personable and um, you definitely are, when you become close with somebody and they become family, your chosen family, um, and this is blood family as well. If you've chosen them as like your soul family, um, there is nothing that will deter you from showing up for them. You absolutely are kind of this ride or die type of person. And, um, and I think this is another quality that really stands out about you. Now, I don't think that you are somebody who, um, you know, indiscriminately brings in people to your life. I think you're very picky and um, quite, dis quite discerning. Um, which you should be, right? And so I think this is how you've really kept your peace. Um, and your life at times has felt like it's gotten smaller, but it has gotten so much more rich, right? Um, the quality of your experiences, the quality of your relationships seem like they have just gotten better and better and better. Okay, so this is, a, I like this energy a lot. This is fun. Okay. So we have this kind of grandma energy here right in here, but we also have another dog and maybe another dog or a cat right here. So I'm wondering if you are somebody who just, you really uh, relate to animals so well. And I think this is something that uh, maybe your grandmother um, or a grandmother figure, uh, somebody in your life who was an elder for sure, um, had a, such an affinity for animals as well. And I wonder if when you spent time with them and their animals, um, you yourself became quite a companion to your furry friends. And so that has kind of come, come along with you through life. And I think that you've always had, um, you know, some kind of animal companion and, um, and, and I think, you know, when we, when we are people who, uh, can really commune with our companions or animals that are kind of around, um, the neighborhood or in our backyards or in the parks or whatever, um, there is this ability to kind of witness not only, um, unconditional love, but also, um, life without the complexity of, 
um, you know, kind of the dramas and ordeals of humans. Um, I, I like to think of this as when I, uh, when I was going through the beginning of my recovery, I'm in recovery for substance abuse and, um, almost have like 10 years now. So, um, at the beginning of this journey that I have found myself on, um, I was with my cats a, a lot. I was by myself. I lived with just my three cats. Now I only have the two. Um, one has transitioned. Uh, but I had my three cats and it was just us. And that it was like that for years. And just living with them, um, receiving the love, the, the absolute um, you know, heart to heart connection that I have with them, but also watching them kind of live the way that they needed to. Um, you know, when they were hungry, they asked for food. When they wanted to sleep, they slept. Uh, you know, when they wanted to play and, and, you know, be a little silly, that's what they did. And, um, and all the things that animals kind of do. Uh, and it, it really, you know, obviously they probably have a lot more social complexity than I realize, but, um, it really did teach me to get back to the very basics of things just to, um, kind of rebuild my sense of being, uh, my ability to function, you know, um, and just in daily life, getting things done, doing the things I needed to do for myself. And, um, and so I see this in other people who have spent a lot of time around animals is, I think there's an understanding about life uh, that not everybody has, right? You you learn to kind of go off of your in, your instinctual drives a little bit more, um, and a lot of those, you know, we might think, oh, it's like violence and 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 um, you know, eating and procreating and all these things. I think it's part of it, right? Uh, but I think that there's a lot of love and intuition and um, animals are absolutely so psychic and, um, and, and they are. They all have their own little universes going on. And when we are so uh, blessed to be able to kind of step into that or uh, witness it, what a gift. So I think that you are somebody who definitely um, has that ability, has had that experience, and um, in a lot of ways, it's given you quite a soft heart, you know, you a fiery heart, <laughs> no doubt, uh, but quite soft and quite loving, quite empathetic. So um, I see this and I, and I think, you know, this is something that you share with your family. I feel like you're not the only one in the family, but you also have that grandmother figure who absolutely is just surrounded by animals here. And I think that that love and devotion um, really kind of starts there for you. Okay. Um, now I want to look over here. We have a 10 and we have a 12. So we have 10, 12. Those seem like important numbers tonight. And we also have, it looks like an eight right here. Okay, 10, 12, eight. Now right in the center, we have an illuminated candle right here. Um, so to me, that says that there is some kind of very central revelation happening in your life. Um, and I feel like it is something that um, maybe it's something you're figuring out about yourself or um, it doesn't feel, sometimes I see this and I think, okay, so there's some kind of um, maybe understanding about family or um, kind of the histories of your self mythology. Um, but I do, I feel like this is something where um, there there's this shift in your own experience of yourself or you're finding that maybe something that you um had not done before maybe you've tried something new you maybe a new hobby or um you've you know started a new relationship or um you know i don't know maybe therapy or or something something where you're doing some kind of um 
like a, you're your own little archaeologist. You're really in there digging around. And I think that you have come to some kind of understanding about yourself. And it's really been an aha moment. Um, and I think that this is something that, uh, you know, um, what the thing I can relate it to for myself, and I know in my readings, I talk about myself a, a fair bit, but it's because of the way that my brain works is one, two, I like to talk about things conversationally because I want you to know me and I want to know you. And, um, if we can find things that we relate to each other, um, I can say something, you know, kind of abstractly and you might think, oh yeah, that's, an interesting fact, but when we talk about it and uh, apply it to a situation, it maybe is, it hits a little different, right? So for me, looking at this, it's almost kind of like in my own experience of um, being diagnosed late for ADHD. I was uh, into my 30s and maybe I was around 30. I forget if it's between 29 and 31, somewhere in there. Um, I was diagnosed and uh it absolutely you know it didn't really change anything practically but it did allow me to look at my life quite differently um you know and especially if you are uh, a woman who um is a late like late diagnosed for ADHD or um even like um autism spectrum um stuff you I, it puts things into context a little differently, right? And so um, it maybe is obviously not exactly this, but um, I think it's something like, you know, this realization about something about yourself that's like, okay, wow, that really is, um, it's so interesting because I've always had these experiences or, um, you know, there are things about myself I didn't really understand or I didn't even know people had similar experiences to me and now I'm kind of plugged into this uh, greater community and, um, and, and it makes me feel like I know myself more, you know, something like that. And that is such a wonderful thing to have happen. Um, it can be scary at first, no doubt, but, um, I think getting some answers, um, maybe even feeling like, okay, well, um, you know, for a lot of my life, I felt quite different or, um, you know, like I just was failing, you know, I, I couldn't, you know, I was like a, a, a triangle peg and everything else was circles and squares. And I just, you know, it was hard to, um, it was hard to figure out like what was going wrong for me. And so I think that there's just in this time in your life, there's been, um, a real kind of things clicking into place right? Really kind of like, okay, I'm getting it now. The I'm getting a, a, a wider perception, perspective of my experience. And um, going forward, you know, this might be something that is helpful for you, um, figuring out how to kind of reorient some parts of your life, you know. So, uh, you know, whatever it is that has has really come to the front um, of your of your kind of identity or your experience of your identity. Um, this is, uh, I feel like a really special moment, okay? And um, and something to maybe be celebrated, really. Uh, this might be a good time to have kind of a, a little, uh, ritual or ceremony, a rite of passage. Um, and it doesn't matter how little the thing is or how large it could be like, Hey, I just figured out that, um, you know, I have an allergy to something and it, I've never realized it, you know, uh, or, you know, I have an intolerance of some kind. Um, but you know, when we can figure these things out, uh, whatever, you know, it's, it does found it, feels pretty profound, right? Um, and it is. So we also have, and I keep staring at this as we're talking here, um, it looks like a cat of some kind, maybe a wild cat. And, um, and it does look like it is kind of, 
I almost wonder if it's like a, it looks like a hyena maybe. Um, but I do, I feel like this energy is that it is something that is, uh, a little bit wily, but also just unstoppable, right? Um, just c completely devoted to whatever it is that it is interested in or fi it has its fixed, you know, its fixation on. Um, so I feel like, and, I, and I'm thinking of like a, of the, um, of like a, a wild dog or maybe a wild cat or, you know, maybe catching its prey or, or whatever it is, but I think that, you know, in this next period of time, there's just this, um, confidence and power swelling up in you. And I think that this is a time for you to really kind of, um, apply, apply your, uh, newfound kind of, um, wand energy apply it to whatever it is that you have going on that is important to you if it is a creative project if it is your work life if it is family um you know whatever this is i think that you know you will get in there and i just can see you kind of moving mountains in a way and um really starting to um create a uh, a relationship with the thing that, um, you have a lot of power, right? A lot of, um, ability to kind of move with, uh, with knowing, right? You, it's like getting in that job and you start to, you know, really do well with whatever, whatever your position is. And then maybe you start cross training. And the next thing you know, you're, you're, you know, advancing and, um, you have a, you can look out across the board of things and you have an understanding of so much of it. You're starting to see the inner workings really kind of, um, appear to you. And with that knowledge, uh, you know, you can kind of learn to play the, the, you know, chess of life there. And, um, and so, you know, I think this is definitely a beautiful time of rising and rising and rising for you, Aries. Now, we also have a big tree. And I just want to look at this really quickly. Um, we have a large tree. And to me, this says that there's just an absolute strength and longevity here for you. Um, I feel that your life uh, it feels more rooted than it ever has. You have quite a foundation and I see you working towards, um, that, that big dream, right? You have a lot of, you know, if you think of your goals as kind of the night sky, you have the, um, a lot of stars in there, a lot of things that you want to do, but then there's that big thing, right? And, um, and I see you working steadily towards it. Okay, and it, it looks closer and closer yet. All right, so I'm going to take another sip here. We have a three, three, zero, one, right there, three, zero, one. We have a bird flying. It looks like we have a dove. So we have a, pe a dove of peace. We have this little fish here. So again, with that abundance, the fish always to me is, and we have one down here as well, um, is, is money. It's really, it's money coming in, resources coming in. Uh, so I do feel like there's a sense of uh, great abundance, you know, and I feel like a lot of this has to do with the fact that, um, you really are in this, this deeply emotional place. Um, and you are not afraid to let this pour into the work that you're doing. Um, you know, I think so often we live in a world where everything is kind of very compartmentalized. Uh, we have to keep things as separated as we can. Um, if you're lucky, you, uh, do some kind of work where you can, um, you know, be your emotional, um, 
self and and express yourself and um you know connect with people and so on uh so i i feel like this is more and more um something that is really important to you i feel like you know you've you've come into a place where you only want to do work that feels meaningful to you um doing doing whatever um kind of uh, soul sucking things that, you know, look, we've all done them. We all sometimes have to continue to do them and, and so on. Um, but finding some, some part of your life where you are doing something that feels quite meaningful. And even if it's not where you're making your money, it could be that you're volunteering or, um, that you are very involved with your community or your family or, you know, whatever your, your hobby or great love is. Um, and this balances it out, hopefully. Uh, if you are, you, you know, you have a job that it doesn't feel so, um, fulfilling. Um, so, you know, all in all, I just really, I feel like this is such a powerful time for you. Um, and, and I've seen that more and more, um, in the readings for Aries, because we had that period of time some months ago where it was, you know, there was some difficult stuff going on. And I think that kind of in, um, response to the heartbreak and the kind of tower moment or tower moments that have occurred, um, you've really chosen yourself. You've really chosen, uh, to, to really kind of fulfill um, the things that you know that you want to do, the things that you know you must do for yourself. And uh, that is a beautiful thing. Now, we have these gratitude cards, a little deck of appreciation. And these are just these little cards are really cute. I like the artwork on them. And the messages are wonderful. And so I'm going to stop where it feels right. We're going to take a look. It says, go ahead and brag. Be someone's biggest fan. You will both feel amazing. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Supporting, um, you know, those that we love around us, those that we are um, impressed by. I think it's, you know, it's so important for us to get out there and tell people, um, the positive things that, that we notice about their work and their, um, you know, their just their interesting and, and their energy and, and whatever. Um, I do, I think it's, you know, it, it, it is, a an experience of gratitude and love and, and connection that we all need more of. I feel like definitely. So anyways, Aries, I'm going to go ahead and tell you I love you because I do. And I thank you so much for spending this time with me. It's always such an honor to be able to bring these messages to you. And if you would be so kind as to like the video, it does help the channel so much. And if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit that little bell. It'll let you know when the next videos are coming out. Uh, it is free to subscribe. And if you'd like to leave a comment, please do. I'd love to hear from you. I just, I look forward to the comments every day. <laughs> I really do. So anyways, I love you. Take care of yourself and we'll talk in just a few days. Good night.